We go to Zimbabwe now, where MDZ Alliance uh, claims that uh, over 200 youth mobilized by the ruling ZANU PF have attacked Nelson Chamisa's convoy. The incident is said to have occurred while he was on his way to meet community leaders in uh, Charumbira. Uh, in the Masfingo province, the Movement of, for Democratic Change Alliance uh, says several party activists were injured. For more on this, uh, we're joined now by Newsroom Africa's uh, Kolisani Mube, as well as MDC Alliance spokesperson advocate Fadzai Mahere. Uh, good evening to you and thank you very much for your time. Kolisani, let me begin uh, with you. Just outline for us this particular story. I mean, Nelson Chamisa, we spoke to him here. Uh, on the show a couple of uh, days ago. He was closed out of an important electoral commission meeting. Uh, there were people who are being arrested on the campaign trail. Now we hear his convoy has been attacked. He's not been having a good time on this lead up to the elections. Well, it's our good evening and good evening to the viewers back home. Indeed, it seemed like uh, there is a build up against uh, you know, the opposition in Zimbabwe. Probably to give you a better understanding is that. Uh, there has been a, a, a constant build-up against the opposition since the lockdown began. That is, in, 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 in 20, 2020, they have been closed out in of having by-elections. And also, they can't hold, you know, campaign rallies in rural areas while Zambia has been having meetings. So this meeting or this attack that happened today is not, by and large, not a surprise because they have been that kind of build-up from the ruling party to say, we must suppress the opportunity in Zimbabwe and ensure that they are not heard or probably do not meet with the people in the country. Do we uh, have any uh, one who has come up to take responsibility for these attacks or have uh, has anyone been arrested? Well, I, I tried to speak to the police uh, this evening. Unfortunately, first and foremost, they said that uh, from their reading of the situation, these are not Zanpia people. They believe that this could be an internal... MDC, you know, a, a faction of battles. Remember, the MDC is split in two factions. There's the Chamisa faction and that of uh, Douglas Monzora. And, and, and ironically, Douglas Monzora had a meeting in Mashingo, which was led by Jaws Mtsekwa, one of the vice chairperson in the province. So the police are trying to lay blame on that. Whilst the, the MDC, they believe because of the messaging which came out, these could be Zanpiv supporters who are trying to frustrate you know, the, 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 the Chamisa led initiatives to go into rural areas and get support. Fazai, 200 villagers, you're saying, are suspected to be a ZANU PF youth. Where did they come from? So, what we saw from uh, the scenes that were there in this footage to confirm this is that there were lorries. Uh, ferrying these uh, villages. Uh, not only were they chanting ZANU PF slogans, uh, their messaging was very consistent with what ZANU PF says around anti sanctions. Uh, they had printed posters. But more fundamentally, what uh, pointed us to ZANU PF more than anything else was the fact that uh, a number of the drunken youths who were the ones responsible for uh, beating up uh, the close protection agents for uh, President Nelson Chamisa actually said uh, on record that they were sent by Chadzamira. Now, Chadzamira, or Ed Ezra Chadzamira, is the provincial minister uh, for Mashingo province, and she's of ZANU-PF. So, you know, all the evidence points towards ZANU-PF. ZANU-PF is the only political party that can get away with holding a gathering of 200 people, stoning vehicles, uh, barricading roads with burning logs, and simply no arrests are, are, are carried out. The very same morning, this very morning, we had a private meeting held at the home of one of our provincial leaders, and police descended on it, riot police violently, and said, stop this meeting right now. Uh, so we know that the only political party that's banned from carrying out its political activities um, is the MDC alliance led by President Nelson Chamisa. There's no evidence whatsoever that points to uh, Douglas Monzora, uh, although he is, as we've said, consistently a proxy of zanu -PF. He had nothing to do with this. This was clearly zanu -PF. And it's actually not the case that there are factions within the MDC. There are two separate political parties, the MDC Alliance and the MDCT. And the main opposition that uh, is led by President Chamiso, who won uh, 2.6 million votes in 2018, is the legitimate opposition, we've consistently said, even though there have been attempts to try and decimate it uh, from the political space in Zimbabwe. Olisane, Masfingo area, is that a stronghold for ZANU-PF? 
Well, it's uh, according to the 2018 uh, you know, uh, elections. Yes, ZANU-PF dominates that province. By and large, the MDC has uh, probably has got two seats in that, in, if, I, if, I, if my memory serves me correctly, two seats in that province. But before that, MDC was a very strong, was had a very strong presence in, in that uh, in that um, that seat in two in, in, 20, in 2008. That's the outset table. The MDC uh, then under Morgan Changrai was the dominant party. So the MDC still has got support base in that province, which can by by any given day could uh, no could challenge NPF. But in 2018, they performed. I would say not fairly well in the you know, in the in, in the elections and ZANPF controls it and uh, by the way this is Emerson Nangawa's stronghold in terms of ZANPF in, in ZANPF itself he has got strong roots that are in Mashingo and Midlands provinces. Yeah. Fazai, do you think the attack has anything to do with uh, the fact that uh, ZANPF was uncomfortable with you campaigning in their stronghold? Absolutely. Um, as we've consistently said, uh, ZANU-PF is running scared. Uh, the citizens are converging in their millions uh, for change. Uh, President Nelson Chamisa has consistently said that we are forming a broad alliance uh, of citizens in all villages and all towns and all cities uh, to, to win Zimbabwe for change in the upcoming election. If ZANU-PF was comfortable with its support base uh, in Mashingo province, they would have no difficulty uh, with President Nelson Chamisa Chamisa just going to visit community leaders. Mind you, this wasn't a rally. It was just a, a meeting to convene civic leaders, opinion leaders, influencers, uh, special interest groups within Mashingo province uh, in line with our rural strategy. If ZANU-PF is confident that they've got this overwhelming support, why are they so afraid of President Nelson Chamisa coming to, to meet people? Clearly, they're not confident uh, of the fact that the people will support them. They know that uh, President Nelson Chamisa's popular support is a threat uh, to their governance, and that's why we see these desperate acts of violence. And we all know that violence is a tool of the weak. The violence is a tool of those who are bankrupt of ideas. Violence is a tool of, you know, bankrupt politics, the kind of politics we no longer want to see yeah. uh, in a constitutional democracy, which is what Zimbabwe ought to be. And yet, President, um, uh, and yet Mr. Mnangagwa consistently undermines the constitution, undermines people's fundamental freedoms, has declared war against the citizens. We can see that the economy is in crisis. Uh, we can see also that, uh, you know, workers are struggling to make a living. Uh, we can see that public hospitals are on their knees. We've got an education uh, crisis again. And so we, we've got a government that has run out of ideas and simply does not have the tools within which, or the tools with which to lead Zimbabwe and transform it and so any threat that they see they quickly resort to violence so that they undermine um the people's ability uh, to govern and form a people's government the government's nick mangwana dismissing their attack as a staged managed drama and what do you say to that why on earth would we stone our own vehicles why would we stop ourselves from traveling to a meeting um, you know, the, the, the statement by uh, Mr. Nick Mangwana, with all due respect, is devoid of logic and common sense, and it's further gaslighting uh, by the regime. It simply does not stand to reason. President Chamisa was on his way to Charumbira village. He was in the Charumbira area. He wanted to quickly get to his meetings so he could meet those community leaders and continue about, um, you know, he's conducting a nationwide tour within all provinces in Zimbabwe to start citizen conversations to, um, you know, uh, enhance our citizen engagement as we uh, strengthen our structures ahead of the election. Why on earth would we stage manage something that would disrupt the work that we're carrying out? It makes no sense and it's simply untrue. And no explanation has been given by Mr. Nick Mangwana as to why the criminal elements that were responsible were, were not arrested. The only explanation that exists is that there's ZANU-PF and so there's selective ap application of the law. They they will never get, uh, you know, arrested for committing clear crimes uh, which offend against our criminal code, which offend against our constitution. Does this put a damper on your campaign? Does it complicate the work that you're trying to do? Absolutely not. We know that we are 
dealing with the rogue regime. Uh, we know that we are dealing with a regime that is dogged by an illegitimacy crisis flowing from the disputed 2018 election. We know that Mr. Mnangab was back is against the war. We're aware of this. We know that he's going to resort to desperate attempts, desperate acts. Uh, these are clearly the last kicks of a dying horse as we march towards the 2023 election. We expect it, but we remain focused on our target to secure 6 million votes so that we win the 2023 election, uh, form the next government, and transform people's lives. It doesn't put a damper on us at all. We know that Mr. Mnangagwa is just a continuation uh, of Mr. Mugabe's dictatorial regime. We know that this is a regime that's characterized by violence, corruption, uh, illegitimacy, a failure to take into account people's daily struggles. We see the economy as I said, is on its knees. The cost of living is unaffordable for most. And more fundamentally, 49% of the population, that 7.9 million out of 50 million are suffering from extreme poverty. Uh, where you would have expected uh, the government to create jobs, they've created more poor people. That's why they're afraid of an election. That's why they're afraid of President Nelson Chamisa, because he offers people hope. He's the one inspiring hope and a thirst for change. And so, of course, the regime is going to be on his case. Of course, they want to try and decimate him. They tried to take away the party's building. They tried to recall our elected representatives. They stole our political uh, funding in terms of the law. They don't want to see the MDC alliance in existence as a political party, which is why they do this. But notwithstanding, all those desperate attempts, notwithstanding all those desperate attacks, we remain standing. Uh, we know the nature of the beast we're dealing with, and we are very much up to the task uh, of, of winning a victory, notwithstanding the environment yeah. that we face. But that notwithstanding, we're not going to stop calling for reform. We're not going to stop calling out these all rogue, right. unconstitutional criminals not going to stop, uh, you know, looking Mr. Mnangagwa in the eye and saying, look, uh, this sort of dictatorship can never take the country forward. All right, Advocate, we've got to have to leave it there because of time. I appreciate you coming on. Advocate Fazai Mahere and Kulisani uh, Mulbe there uh, joining us uh, tonight to outline that story.